Hey yo, what is up guys? Akar share back with another video and today we are going to see what is Laura. I must tell you Laura plays a very important part in the internet of things community these days because this is an emerging technology. So to be to give an example, I will say that using Laura you can transfer data from one point to other point and these points can be tens of hundreds of kilometers apart and uh, you can do all this without any real uh, 4G, 3G, GSM or Wi-Fi or internet. This is a different type of wireless technology. If that excites you, keep watching this video. Let's get started. So starting with the basics, this is the logo that you might have seen if you are aware of LoRa. And this is a, a trademark sign and uh, this LoRa technology or protocol is owned by a company called Semtech. So, uh, LoRa is a short form of, so this consists of two words, L-O and R-A. Law for, stands for long and Ra stands for range. What can we do using this? So, suppose in the Internet of Things platform, you have a sensor node somewhere here. And you need its data at some place over here. So, this is, suppose your home. And you need to transfer this data over here. So if the distance is like say 2 meters. So it's like just in the uh, outside of your house. So you might use Wi-Fi for this application. Yep. Why not? But what if I say that this distance is not 2 meters. But is 200 meters. Or maybe 500 meters. What solution will you apply? You might use, you may say that you will apply, uh, you will add a GSM module to this and this will work for 200, 500 or any distance for that matter. Because GSM, wherever you have the network coverage, it will work. So an alternative to GSM comes in LoRa. There are modules available like this for LoRa. You will just connect LoRa to the sensor node and you will also add one LoRa over here. And that will do the work. I will tell you more that how LoRa works. But LoRa is very useful in distant applications. Where the distance is large. And the data that has to be sent is less. So one good feature is that you can achieve very large distances. 500 meter is very easy. If you use a better antenna, a better uh, line of sight and uh, things like that, you can achieve dist distances to up to, up to 100 kilometers. Yes, that is correct. You can achieve distances up to 100 kilometers with LoRa. So, but the disadvantage is that you need to use less data. You need to send less data at one time. So, talking about data, the maximum data rate for LoRa is 50 kbps sorry kbps so this is bits so things like video transmission is not possible but what is possible is transferring sensor data so this so sensor may be a humidity sensor or a temperature sensor or a light sensor whatever it may be so this type of data doesn't change very rapidly in certain conditions so there you can apply LoRa so now talking of the main advantages it is long range also one thing is you can achieve very uh, good battery life out of this so low power also so where you can use GSM as well GSM or 4G or any of that thing or Wi-Fi consumes a lot of power. LoRa consumes a very little power like 10 milliamps, 20 milliamps max while, while transmitting or receiving in certain modes. While the disadvantage for LoRa is that uh, the data rate is limited. So by saying this I say that the bandwidth is also limited so taking a typical application of this so suppose I have a farm so there is my farm I represent it by green color and I have a home 
which is far from my farm. Again, a poor drawing of my home. And the distance is like, uh, say, 2 kilometers. And I need to see, I need to monitor humidity at all times of my farm for four different points. So, what I will do is add a humidity sensor, connect it to LoRa, and will uh, use obviously a microcontroller and add a battery for it. Now, this LoRa will be connected to a LoRa at home. Now, in this case, LoRa is low power consumption, microcontroller can go to sleep after taking consecutive readings like every one minute or every two minutes or whatever the use case is and we achieve a good distance, we can power this entire system with batteries and we can uh, also achieve a good battery life that is this entire system can be entirely powered by batteries up to one year, yes, one year with a one LiPo battery. These tests have been performed distance tests have been performed battery life has been performed so this is very much applicable in situations like this now moving on to the technical aspects so you might ask that is lora magic that it does so long distances and it does not consume power how can it do that no it is not magic it is pure science i'll tell you the science behind it the main thing behind it is, is css css is chirp spread spectrum so this is a modulation technique. What modulation is that uh, the signal that you have uh, is changed in such a way that uh, it gives better features. So chirp sped spectrum or CSS is a modulation technique that is mainly used uh, for LoRa. For better understanding, let's directly compare LoRa with LTE. So that the first thing we'll see is modulation technique. So, so LoRa uses CSS as I told you and this uses FDMA. FDMA is frequency division multiplexing access. The second thing we'll see is data rate. The maximum data rate we can achieve with LoRa is 50 kilobits per second while LT is much faster you can stream videos etc with 10 mbps one technical term is link budget link budget for LoRa is around 154 dBm while link budget for LT is around 130 dBm you might ask what is link budget yes I will tell you that link budget is just like pocket money the more you have the better so in this case, a uh, link budget, say suppose there is an antenna transmitter over here. This will radiate signals all over the place and there will be things in between. So there will be blockages and your trans and your receiver will be at a far distance from the transmitter. So more the link budget of the signal or the technology or the uh, modulation technique that is used in this antenna while transmitting the signals, the better the capability of that signal to reach, reach at the receiver. So according to that explanation, you can obviously understand that as LoRa has a better link budget than LTE, it has, it has definitely a better range and uh, a better capability of transferring signals. With this link budget, and taking ideal conditions, we can calculate range to be around 1300 kilometers. But as this is ideal case, uh, there are many attenuations that happen in the wire that is used in transmission and there are blockages in between etc etc. So we do not get this range because this is ideal, we get a lesser range but this is a very good link budget that we get for a, such a cheap price. So the main trade-off is the data rate. And data rate is directly uh, linked with the bandwidth. So more the bandwidth, so I'll abbreviate the bandwidth with BW. So more the bandwidth, lesser the, more the data rate. The bandwidth of the channel is the amount it, the amount you can send at one time. So here I have a bandwidth versus range chart where I will use 
uh, which I will use to compare different technologies. So here I have made four boxes which I will fill out. The first one is Wi-Fi, the most popular for makers in IoT. So Wi-Fi has a very high bandwidth. You can obtain very high speed uh, internet connections using Wi-Fi, but the range again is too small for Wi-Fi. On the other hand, for the same range, we have Bluetooth. So Bluetooth, but has a lesser bandwidth. You cannot stream videos with it maximum to maximum. You can stream audio with it. That also medium quality. This box with a good range and a good bandwidth is 4G, LTE, GSM, etc. So on this side with higher bandwidth, on this side and on this side. So this will be 4G. This will be 2G and all mobile networks basically. But this box is the special box that we are studying about. This has LoRa in it. So what LoRa can do, it can provide very high range, but for a low bandwidth. So in LoRa, you can also play with the bandwidth. So you can select your bandwidth and according to the bandwidth, you can change the range. So if your bandwidth, if you increase your bandwidth, your range decreases. So you can select your bandwidth according to your range, but selecting the bandwidth is a special case as you need to see how much data you need to send and according to that you need to select your bandwidth. Apart from this, you might have heard about LoRa Alliance and LoRa WAN. These are two terms that you also need when uh, learning about LoRa. So LoRa Alliance are the set of the companies uh, or many companies which uh, support LoRa and which use LoRa and they have networks for LoRa. On the other hand, LoRa WAN is a LoRa uh, network which is spread over a wide area. So this uh, happens using a LoRa WAN gateway. So what a gateway does, it connects LoRa with 4G as an in internet if you have a big area so this is like say 100 kilometers by 100 kilometers so we will have gateways so we will have gateways some some somewhere here and there and all the uh, sensor nodes will connect to, do, to these gateways using LoRa technology and these nodes will be connected to internet directly. These are like base station towers in mobile networks. So these will connect to the internet and all the data from the sensors will be directly uploaded to the internet. Now these LoRaWAN gateways can be applied uh, two types. It's commercially and uh, hobby style. So commercially companies use this to run their products to transfer data to their products. Uh, hob uh, according to hobby wise, or you may say community wise, you can use LoRaWAN uh, using a site called the Things Network. So using the Things Network, you can access a LoRaWAN gateway. All the uh, people, general public have their gateways installed. You can send data to their gateways uh, and vice versa. You can also set your gateways. I, pre I recommend you do that. Uh, so that you also contribute to the community that is important to make the things network a successful platform things network is also a part of LoRa Alliance so now moving from the technical part to the interesting hardware part so there are many modules that you can purchase I'll mention all the links in the description below which you should uh, uh, which you can buy to get started so this is the basic module I've done it upside down because it was an SMD part and I had to solder it on a perf board. So this is a RA2, RA02, which consists of a Semtech SX1768, uh, if I'm not wrong. And I've made a project also. So this, so this is a basic LoRa transmitter module, which sends out packet. And this was my first project. So I didn't even use a proper antenna. I just used a wire and it still works perfectly fine. So it has an OLED display, a battery, a LoRa module, an ESP8266, and it just uh, transfers packets to a uh, range around it. And uh, that is a LoRa transmitter. We'll make this on our channel. Uh, stay tuned to our channel. Other module is, uh, so this module is connected to the 
ESP8266 using an SPI MOSI MISO SCK pins. Uh, a similar this one is for 433 MHz uh, frequency and uh, the RA02. I bought this module, which is the 915 MHz module from DF Robot. And uh, this is a Fire Beetle series, so you can just uh, solder pins and plug it in on an ESP8266. Very useful if you are not into soldering and stuff. We will do a video on this as well. And this is the LoRa module. Uh, again, this is the 890 MHz frequency module. And uh, this has a microcontroller built in. So you can use this directly as a UART uh, device. So there is RX and TX pins which directly uh, sends in and data etc. So you can control this device using AT commands. This is a device from, this is a module from Reax. I will mention both the links for the Fire Beetle from DF Robot and this Reax module in the description below you can purchase this we will use all of this stuff we'll make laura gateways we'll have a lot of fun with laura so stay tuned to the channel subscribe to the channel hit like if you liked our video comment down below to know what should i make with laura and if you have any doubts